When we think about the homeless, it's safe to say that most normal people ponder the enormity of the problem and what we can do as a society to help. It simply doesn't cross most of our minds to wonder if we could somehow exploit the plight of the homeless for our own financial gain. But it turns out that there are some heartless con men and women out there who use their cunning and complete lack of scruples to do just that. Fortunately, in a world where practically everyone has a video camera in their pocket, many of these crooks get exposed for all the world to see. Here's a karmically satisfying list of the top 10 fake homeless people busted on camera. San Diego resident Melissa Smith told the local news that she'd seen the same pregnant woman with a small boy of about five in tow, panhandling at a local mall every weekend for a couple months. But one weekend, she got an unexpected shock when she spotted the down-on-her-luck mom, who would sometimes be joined by a man who was presumably the boy's father, climbing into a Mercedes-Benz luxury car and driving away. As luck would have it, Miss Smith happened to stop at the same gas station as the crooks on the way home. The man was with them, and as they left the gas station, Miss Smith followed, all the while snapping pictures of the couple, their car, and their license plate. The local news station traced the plate to an apartment in the area, but as may have been expected, nobody answered the door, and a few days later, the couple appeared to have split. But not long after the story broke, the couple were spotted again, this time with their newborn, asking for handouts in a different part of town. When confronted by reporters, they feigned being bad at English and denied having a Mercedes before hurrying away in a black minivan. Apparently, their scam worked well enough to rent an apartment and buy not one, but two vehicles. But now that their cover had been blown, it's unlikely they'll be able to milk San Diego residents for any more of their hard-earned cash. Michael Le Dominguez of Richmond, Virginia was running a similar con, and she may have been able to keep pulling it off for a little longer, or at least avoid a jail, if she weren't as foolish as she is crafty. Alert residents who had noticed her panhandling throughout the city confronted her in a video that quickly went viral, as she was getting ready to take off in her shiny new Fiat, which she had left in a McDonald's parking lot during her begging excursion. She insisted that the whistleblowers leave her alone, dodging questions about her activities and her car before finally and lamely asserting that she has a disability the nature of which she of course refused to disclose. After her sudden YouTube stardom, she inexplicably chose to go right back to the same routine, and the public was quick to call her out. In the middle of being caught on video yet again scamming the public, she began lobbing Gatorade bottles at a car, which was enough to earn her a well-deserved trip to jail. Miss Dominguez will want to think twice before trying to run her con in Richmond again, but somehow it seems likely we haven't seen the last of her. Gary Thompson was a regular on the streets of Lexington, Kentucky, and if you'd seen him, you probably would have reached for your wallet. The wheelchair-bound Thompson spoke with the childlike halting cadence of the profoundly mentally disabled and told the story about how a settlement that his mother had received for the motorcycle accident which had disabled them as a child, to the tune of $2.5 million, had long since dried up. That part was true, and Gary indeed needs the wheelchair, but as a degree holder in speech and language pathology, the mental disability was just a manipulative, masterful piece of acting. Gary was busted by a local news crew speaking in his regular voice, but instead of being contrite or evasive, he boastfully admitted his scam and claimed to earn close to $100,000 per year perpetrating it. Predictably, the story went viral, and the intense public backlash was enough for Gary to change his tune. In a follow-up story a few weeks later, he claimed to have quit panhandling and begun seeking employment, and to be genuinely remorseful. But while feigning a mental disability may not have been enough for the police to get involved, the bad checks he had been passing along with the nearly $100,000 in fraudulent social security and Medicaid benefits he had obtained was. Gary is currently in the slammer, and he may be there for a while. In 2012, a New York City TV news crew got a little curious about a woman they would see every day making her way up and down Fifth Avenue, which is populated by trendy upscale shops and the well-to-do shoppers who frequent them. Dressed in rags with her back bent at a terrible angle, she would hobble along on her crutches, shaking her cup and asking for donations, and she would get a lot of them. The news crew watched her day after day, scoring up to 50 donations per hour, and then hopping on a crosstown bus, getting into a black van, and emerging as a completely different woman. As you can see, she is neither dressed in rags nor having any difficulty with walking. And once they compiled this smoking gun evidence, the woman was confronted while in costume by a reporter and cameraman. Refusing to break character, the woman hobbled away while the reporter implored her to give up the act, to no avail. The woman hasn't been identified, and chances are she's moved on to a less public scam in the year since. But if you're ever doing any shopping in the Big Apple, you might want to keep an eye out for this shameless phony. 
In 2016, a beggar in the city of Altay in northwest China tried an unbelievably ridiculous method of feigning disability in order to gain sympathy. Video which went viral throughout China showed a suspicious passerby interrogating the man, who appeared to have lost his legs below the knee. But the passerby forcibly removed the man's pants, exposing his impressively contorted legs, which he had somehow folded into his underwear. You may recognize this as the exact ploy attempted by Eddie Murphy's character Billy Ray Valentine in the classic comedy film Trading Places, which makes the gambit all the more hilariously stupid. He probably won't be trying this again anytime soon, what with the public humiliation. But one could argue that any money he bilked out of the public was worth it for this sublime piece of comedy. Iowa business owner Mike Pothoff decided to take matters into his own hands when he kept seeing the same two teenage boys holding a sign reading Broken Hungry Please Help on a street corner by his place of business for several days. He approached them and offered them a job in his store, but instead of being grateful for the offer of gainful employment, they turned him down, telling him that they weren't from the area. Mr. Pothoff was puzzled, but his puzzlement turned to anger when he saw the same boys holding the same sign a couple days later. He repeated his offer but was turned down once again, so he made a sign of his own. One which read, offered these guys a job, they said no, don't give money. A picture posted to Facebook of Pothoff standing side by side with one of the panhandlers, each holding their signs, quickly went viral and led to a story on the local TV news. Amazingly, he says that his job offer is still open, and even more amazingly that this isn't the first time he's had a job offer turned down by a panhandler. YouTuber Jack Vale, who runs a channel with his family, was alerted by his uncle to a homeless man who didn't appear to be exactly what he claimed. The uncle thought he had seen a regular panhandler in his neighborhood driving away in a nice new car, so he enlisted Jack to do a little investigative reporting, and it turned out that he had hit the nail right on the head. After surreptitiously taking video of the man holding a sign and taking donations, Jack and his makeshift crew followed him down an alleyway, where sure enough he climbed into a nice new Chevy and took off. The intrepid YouTubers then managed to follow him to a house in a nice neighborhood, where they confronted him about his day's activities. Predictably, the man was not happy that he'd been discovered, and became belligerent, before almost becoming physical. But he had been utterly busted, and it's doubtful he'll be running his racket in Jack Vale's neighborhood again. Portland, Oregon's Michelle Bocci won over the hearts of the town's residents with a sob story straight out of a patriotic country song. A Marine veteran who had served in Iraq and Afghanistan, Bocci had endured a litany of hardships, losing his wife in childbirth and even having his beloved dog, a bomb sniffer who had been by his side throughout his service, get struck by a car and killed. Social media campaigns called attention to his plight as a heroic widower with two young children about to lose his home, and the donations have poured in from churches and community groups throughout the area. But one did determined reporter from a local TV station started tugging its strings, and before long Bocci's whole story had totally unraveled. For starters, he had never served in the Marines or any other branch of the military. His entire service record, along with his stories of being a war hero and earning a Purple Heart, was totally fabricated. He had never been married, and the children he had been posting pictures with on social media were those of his friends and acquaintances, not his own. It's not even clear whether he'd actually ever had a dog. And to top it all off, several women have come forward alleging that Bocci coerced them into giving giving him thousands of dollars after meeting him on various dating sites. Bocci has been charged with several counts of theft by deception, but he's no longer in danger of losing his home. He'll have a dependable roof over his head for many years while serving his inevitable jail sentence. Former Army medic Garrett Goodwin lost his cool when he spotted a man on the streets of his hometown in full military garb, with a sign stating that he was a homeless Army vet. Goodwin had no way to tell if the man was actually homeless, but he was pretty sure the guy was no veteran, and he wasn't about to let that fly. When confronted with the burly Goodwin, the decidedly more slight imposter dropped his story in no time flat, admitting that he didn't have a military ID card and responding to Goodwin's demands to take off my uniform with nothing more than a contrite yes sir. Goodwin's continuing to harangue the man after he complied with this demand earned him a few scornful remarks on social media, saying that he had gone too far and crossed the threshold into outright bullying. But it's easy to see why this kind of thing provokes the ire of those who have served, and it happens with disturbing frequency. YouTube channel Epic5 TV posted a video in which one of their contributors strikes up a conversation with a supposedly homeless down-on-his-luck guy in Las Vegas. He at first offers money, which the guy would have gladly accepted, but the YouTuber then claims to be out of cash, and instead offers to pay for a hotel room on his credit card, which the guy declines. It turns out that he did so for a pretty good reason. Unbeknownst to the con man, the same contributor had encountered him weeks earlier while filming a prank video in which he asks random bystanders to help him rob a bank to get their reactions. The guy admits that his get 
made up is just a costume and that he owns a house, probably figuring that anyone with enough criminal tendencies to rob a bank wouldn't blow the whistle on him. This YouTuber's experience illustrates a valuable lesson, that anyone who is truly down on their luck would have no trouble accepting an offer of actual help, rather than cash. It might be a good idea to keep this in mind the next time you want to help out the less fortunate.